just reviews on the movie, the parts you lose. I'm the end guy. I'm going to tell you like it is. This film was like watching an icicle melt during an early spring day while watching the water dripping from the frozen water. You do feel a little anxiety in your stomach knowing warm days are ahead. But you don't feel too much more than that even after the tiny frozen spike falls from the gutter. Director for the film, The Parts You Lose, was Christopher Catwell. Christopher is also a writer and producer who has worked in television, film, and comic books. Catwell is writing his own comic book called She Could Fly, which was picked up by AMC as a TV series. He's also writing comic books for Doctor Doom and The Mask. The cast in the film Parts You Lose was Aaron Paul as a criminal. I call him Jesse. Danny Murphy as Wesley, the small boy. Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Gail, Wesley's mother, a desperate woman trying to survive. And Scoot. Neary as Ronnie, as Wesley's father, an asshole alcoholic. The film The Part You Lose is about a deaf boy who befriends a man and helps him to stay alive. They eventually become friends, but as reality is slowly surrounding them and creeping into their lives, they both have to make hard decisions. They casted Aaron Paul perfect. For many people who knows Aaron as Jesse Pinkman, he brought that character in the film with him, even if he liked it or not. So he really wasn't sure how Aaron's character was going to sway during different situations in the film. It's sad to say when an actor does great work in a single film or series, the public has a hard time letting that character go. Ah, uh, man, man, was she a big fat person? But there are successes like George Clooney, Will Smith, and Michael Douglas. To name a few, what I liked about the film, the old wooden floorboards in the house with film alongside the edges. Knowing how much you scrub that floor, it'll never look clean. A sheet of plywood for the main door, wallpaper on the wall, looked old, worn, dingy, and wrinkled. Double sash, single pane windows with frost built up on the window, like an image of a snowy deep valley, letting the cold air inside the house. <sighs> Love to see when Wesley, the little boy, had his backpack full and hanging off his shoulders, looking around his bedroom as if it would be the last time he would see his room, or he realizes nothing will ever be the same after stepping outside that room. It reminded me when I, when I stood in my bedroom as a young man looking around, holding my packed gym bag and heading for Pittsburgh and Fort Dix. I remember that early morning so clearly. I was full of nervous excitement, but I also felt empty inside. What I didn't like about the film, many scenes were in the frigid abandoned milk barn with Jesse and Wesley, and I only seen their breath three times. Jesse's phone would have needed a charge at least once during the time he spent in the old barn. And what about any bars on his phones because of his isolated location? I personally thought Wesley had selective hearing. He could hear Jesse the first time he met him while Jesse was laying in the straw. And what about Wesley was able to hear the truck driver while in the cab? But Wesley couldn't hear his asshole father when he talked to him. <laughs> How about Wesley pulling the dead weight of Jesse on a sled all the way from the frozen river to the remote barn? I thought the state police, for some reason, stayed in one area for an extra long amount of time. Out of ten, I give this film a 6.5. That's a deep plus in my world. For me, the film is like it was there, and there it wasn't. There wasn't a point to the storyline. I still don't know what the title of the film represents. Did it mean Wesley's hearing? Did it mean losing Jesse's friendship? Did it mean Jesse's losing part of his finger? I don't know. Hey, thank you for watching, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you.